Hey guys and welcome. Welcome again to another episode of The Seaman Vlogger. For today's vlog, ang pag-uusapan natin ay tungkol sa pirata. Not sunset. Sundown and rise. What I mean is yung tunay na pirata sa dagat. Where is our captain? Where is our guy? Ah! Ano ang gagawin mo pag na-hijack ang barko at nagdoon ka sa loob ng barko ng pirata? So, ano pang hinihintay natin? Let's begin! So, first things first, hindi pa ako nakaka-experience na nahagya ko yung sinasakit kong barko at ayoko din na experience yung ganong sitwasyon. So ngayon, i-share ko sa inyo kung ano nga ba ang gagawin namin kung sakaling nahijack ng pirata ang barko yung sinasakit namin according sa rules or tinatawag natin international rules. Nung panahong... Uh, wala pang warship na naglilibot sa Gulf of Aden para i-assist ang mga barko doon about sa pirata. Yung mga wala pang mga private companies, yung mga armed guards na sumasaba ng barko para protektahan ang crew, ang cargo at ang vessel. Actually, karamihan ng dumadaan sa Gulf of Aden, automatic yan, sasampahan ng pirata, i-hijack ang barko, at syempre, pag na-hijack ang barko, so, tuntun kayo sa Somalia, tapos maghihintay kayo na tubusin ng ship owner yung sinasakyan yung barko. Straight to the point, walang patumpik-tumpik. According sa international law, na sinusunod namin mga siman bawal lumaban sa mga pirata pag na-hijack ka na or pag na-hijack na ang barko at na-capture na kayo hindi ka pwedeng lumaban for sure marami magsasabing bakit hindi pwedeng lumaban syempre di ba patay ko patay actually this is not a video kayong like katulad ng call of duty At hindi rin to yung ano yung teleserye na mga action katulad nung ano nung police na si Coco Martin. Kasi ang gusto ng international law ayaw nila na mapatay yung mga innocenting seaman dahil lumaban. At alam ko rin na medyo nakakasama nga ng loob na hindi lumaban. Pero yun nga, armado sila, kayo hindi. Or kaming mga siman, hindi kami armado ng barel. Ngayon, kung sasabihin yung bakit walang barel ang barko pag tumadaan ng Gulf of Aden, we are not licensed to have a gun on board. Bawal ang barel sa barko. Uh, usually, pag iba pa ang puerto na pupuntahan mo, malaman na meron kayong barrel on board, medyo masakit sa ulo na kapitan at ng ship owner ang ganyang issue. Dahil, syempre, may kanya-kanyang rules ang mga puerto o mga bansa about sa firearms. At lalong-lalo na, syempre, sinabi, edi eh, itago na lang, di ba? So, paano pag nahuli ang tinabong barrel na yan? Napakasakit sa ulo niyan, baka pwede pa makulong si kapitan, di ba? Pwedeng maditay ng barko, Um, marami, marami pwede mangyari na marami, marami pwede mangyari pag may uh, barel, legal man or illegal 
nasa parko papapuntahan ng puerto so according dun sa ano sa armed guards na mga nakakasama namin sa barko usually ginakosap ko yan tinatanong ko yan kung ano ba talaga ang mga pirata sa Somalia so usually ang mga pirata sa, sa Somalia kaya ano yan uh, matatapang yan agresibong kumuha ng barko yan um, mga nakadroga kasi yan eh so parang sabihin mong hindi naman sa, sa te- katinuan ng utak diba? hindi naman pwedeng gawin yung ganun so usually bago sila mag hijack o pumunta sa dagat para kumuha ng barko at mamparil ng barko dun nagano muna yan, nati-take muna ng drugs yan at may isa pang um, problema dun or sabihin natin sitwasyon ng mga Somalian bakit uh, talagang nag-hijack sila isang reason din is yung uh, pag once na bumalik sila ng Somalia at wala silang nakuhang barko or na na barko pwedeng patayin yung pamilya nila so yun din yung nagtutulak sa kanila kaya nag-hijack sila. Kumbaga ano, 'di ba? They want to protect their family, 'di ba? So ngayon, para hindi patayin yung pamilya nila, mag-hijack sila even though sila ang mamatay. Kasi minsan, sa sobrang high nila sa ano, sa droga, minsan pati ang warship gusto nilang i-hijack. Tapos, yung pamimirata nila, um, actually may training center na yun eh, para mga seaman, may training center dito. So sa kanila, meron din training center para maging pirata. Tapos meron din yung mga taong, sabihin natin mga rich kid nila doon, hindi ko alam po saan galing ko sa kanila or sa ibang bansa, nagpa-fund sa kanila ng armas, ng boat, para mag-pirata. So ngayon, alimbawa, na-hijack na nga tayo, wag naman sana, di ba? So ayaw naman natin talaga ma-hijack. Um, lucky leader sa armed guard naman, diba? So, halimbawa, uh, ano ba ang sitwasyon ng mga na-hijack ng mga crew or seaman sa Somalia? Usually, itong papakita ko sa inyong video, um, galing to sa isang armed guard. So, in, mga, marami sila, ang armed guard kasi, maraming mga intelligence yan na kinukuha nila para meron silang information na kung anong, kung anong gagawin nila pag during on board. So, ito yung video, tatlong video to um, pinasa sa akin ng armed guard to, sabi, niya, sabi ko kung pwede kong gawa ng vlog, which is sabi niya, sige um, lahat to um, ito yung, ano, ito yung uh, video so ito ang mga itsura ng mga na-hijack na seaman na nandun ngayon sa Somalia My name is Eddie Lopez Eddie Lopez Where are you from? I am from Denmark What kind of ship? What the name of ship? Uh, the name of your ship, what is it? The name of the ship is uh, Leopard. It's a Danish ship. And the company? The Danish. The name of the company is Chickcraft. Chickcraft. Uh, when they catch you? We was catch the 12th of January this year. Uh, where they catch you? They catch us uh, in the middle of the Indian Ocean. Uh, about five o'clock in the afternoon. What do you are loading? Uh, we have uh, military equipment on board the ship. Uh, which one was loading in Europe? Uh, different ports. Uh, was Germany, uh, Montenegro, uh, Sweden. France also, and uh, they was going to uh, Mumbai. We had to uh, load in also and discharge. We was also in England, and then we have to uh, discharge all the equipment in uh, different ports: uh, Mumbai, uh, Singapore. Porkilan in Malaysia and the last port is Busan 
that we have also Surabaya in Indonesia. I forgot. And uh, Marabilis in uh, Philippines. And last board is supposed to be Busan in Korea. They, they catch us uh, the 12th of January, about 5 o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, the, my chief mate, he was on duty at this time, and uh, he saw one echo in the radar. And uh, of course, he tried to maneuver away from the echo, but uh, our ship is a, a small one and sailing only 10 knots is no uh, quick enough and uh, he called me so when I went to the bridge uh, it was already two a small boat on the way to the ship and uh, of course I activate all alarms and call the company and I try to make different maneuvering to evade the, uh, the boat, but uh, as I told you before, the, our ship is very slow. It's sailing only 10 knots, so, and there was two boats. So, one uh, in each side, a starboard and port side, they start shooting and they, they break all windows in the wheelhouse and there was bullet everywhere one bullet passing about f five centimeters I get glass on my face and uh, when the chief mate he said to me it's one man already on deck I stopped the ship and we went down to the we tried to hide it in the engine room about five hours and until the pilot they break the door and they take us to the bridge and then we was hit with uh, guns and three and, and everything and uh, in the meantime when the we was down in the engine room the pilot they push all the buttons in the, in the bridge so I don't know what happened, really happened, but uh, when we try to start the engine again, we can start the engine, but we cannot engage. And it was impossible. We tried everything. They tried also uh, my motorman go down and, and shake, but uh, they cannot solve the problem. And then, uh, yeah, they try also to, uh, with a fishing boat to chuck us, but uh, is the fishing boat was also too small for our ship. So, and then they decide after to, uh, with a fishing boat chuck us, but uh, is the fishing boat was also too small for ship. So, then decide after. Course, to take all my crew and me to the fishing boat and then transfer us to the fishing boat and we left the ship. Well, there were you uh, the, this, uh, the, the cash us. We sailed in about four days to Obio. Uh, we was in the... Okay, when, when was it the day they take you out from the ship? Is outside, now, I mean, they take you outside. Now it's uh, three months ago, but there was the 4th of April. They take us out from the other ship. And uh, from there, what happened? From then, what happened is we have been around all ways in uh, bush area like this one. <coughs> and uh, the situation is very bad because we are very afraid. We don't eat, we get only uh, small meat every two days and we drink some camel milk and water is dirty and uh, I am sick, 
I am very sick. Uh, I had a lot of pain in my stomach, and uh, one of my crew member also had a problem with the stomach, and uh, my motorman is uh, he had problem with the hair. The, the pressure, blood pressure is up and down, up and down, and sometimes he's feeling very bad. So I don't know how long we're gonna we can take this. Are you are you all and your crew member together? Yes, we are now all together. So what you are what are you wishing from the your company or when was the last time you talked to your company? The last time I talked with my company is a three and a half months ago. And I wish if to send a message to the company please help us we are very afraid we want to see our family it's 10 months ago i left my house and if the company cannot pay please the, i ask the danish government to help us or push the company to bring us home okay what are you saying to your government or your company to just a request or what message you're gonna leave to your campaign or your family or Danish government? The, to the Danish government, I, I say that please help us. Please help the company or push the company to pay what they buy that demand. We, we don't know how long we're gonna take it. <coughs> this here is this. Pressure is enormous all the time. This psychologist, we are very bad. You can look around, people they are pointing with weapon all the time. We are afraid we're gonna die here. Okay, when you talk to the pirates, what case they caught you? What case they catch you and caught you? They they suspect us that uh, we carry. Uh, uh, poison uh, on board the ship to, uh, and drop in the India uh, Somalia water. They are. This is the reason they catch. They say that uh, they suspect us that we contaminate the Somalian water. And uh, and also we are very very afraid for the time when we was catch. There was four Somalian guys that were captured for the military NATO. And one of the men, he lost the lake. And now they are Somalian. They say they we're gonna pay for that. So we are very afraid. One of us is gonna die here. So what we are wishing what are you wishing for your hope? What what are you wishing for the, the future? I, I hope that the Danish government or the or the, or the company uh, can make a deal with the Somalian. Uh, we can bring them to the side. And I hope this is happening very soon because, as I told you, we I cannot take any more this shit. I maybe less than one month we one of on my crew gonna die. This is I am very afraid. What's your name? My name is uh, Sean Lungbjorn. From where? I'm a uh, Danish. I'm from Denmark, born in Denmark. And uh, I was uh, a chief mate on board uh, motor vessel Leopard, a Danish ship. And, uh, 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 I'm, I'm uh, uh, chief mate, so I, I have a sea watch uh, navigation of the ship, navigation of the ship, and uh, also, also uh, uh, some of my jobs is also to take care of the lashing of cargo and deck work and so on. So, and, uh, uh, so are you like to just do message? Okay, tell me how your situation of living and health. 
in Somalia. How do you feel? Now for, for the last about three months he's sitting here, as the captain told. Uh, and he is scared all the time and, and uh, cannot sleep and so on. Because I have some problem with my eyes to get uh, infection. And the other day, I get a uh, stomach. And then the driver told us that there was cholera in there. So I don't think I, I live for, for much more. So the Danish government, please help us. Please help us before we die. Please. Tell the, the, the government, you tell the company to pay so we can get home. Please. So. My name is uh, Rene Abeles. You're from where? From Philippines. How do you see the, this situation? The situation uh, right now is uh, very bad. And uh, I don't know if uh, I can stay longer here. <laughs> or maybe I will die.
Oh yan, nakita nyo, di ba? Parang hindi natin sila makakain, nasa hubat sila, tapos hindi na rin sila nag... May talagang kawawa, di ba? Payat na sila, di ba? Hindi natin alam kung ano nangyayari doon. And then, ito naman ang itsura ng barko pag nandun sa lugar nila. Yan, tingnan nyo kung gaano katumi. Yan, so nakita nyo, di ba? Dumi. Yung ano na yan, yung dahon na nakita nyo yan, yan yung isang kind of drugs na tinitake nila na nakakahide daw, tapos uh, hindi ka daw makatulog dyan. Gising ka 48 hours, hindi ka nakakaramdam ng uhaw, hindi ka nakakaramdam ng gutom. As per uh, arm guard intel. So ngayon, maswerte yung mga seaman na na, I mean, sabi natin, nakukuha ka agad or binabayaran ka agad ng ship owner nila yung ransom. Malas naman na mga iba um, hindi binabayaran kasi masyadong mahal talaga yung ano yung uh, ransom na yan. Um, usually as per Intel din ng Arm Guard, ang pinakamatagal na yun doon is around 3 uh, to 4 years na nandoon sa Somalia na hindi uh, binabayaran ng ransom. Syempre, hindi rin papakawalan na si at kanyang barko. So ang tanong, magkano ba ang ransom? Yan, sigurado. Magugulat kayo. Alam nyo kung gaano kamahal or gaano kataas ang presyo? It's tumataginting na 1 million US dollar. 1 million US dollar. So as a proof, ito rin yung isang picture ng ano, ng uh, sabi natin letter ng mga pirata sa ship owner. So tingnan niyo yan. Ayan o, di ba? Nakita nyo, 1,00, tatlong 0, tatlong 0, tapos USD. So, yan ang gusto ng uh, pirata para ma-release yung crew at ang barko ng ship owner. At alam ko, tatanungin nyo, paano pinapadala? Siyempre, hindi ba yung bank transfer yan, di ba? So, illegal yan. Um, malalaman din nila kung sino nga talaga yung uh, mga pasimuno dyan sa mga pirata na yan. So, dalawang klase para ipadala ang uh, ransom money. Number one, by sea. Paano ba sinasabing by sea? So, mag-hire si ship owner ng isang tugboat tapos pupunta dun sa area ng, ano, ng uh, Somalia tapos kukunin yung, ano, yung pera by roof. So, parang ganito. Then next naman ay by air. So, paano ba by air? So, meron isang private airplane na magda-drop ng pera sa dagat tapos kukunin ng skiff ng pirata. So, parang ganito.
So ayan guys, so nalaman na natin kung ano nga ba ang dapat ang ginagawa ng uh, ship owner, ng pirata, tapos ng crew about just related na topic na yan na pag na-hijack ka. So sana naman wala na ma-hijack na barko kasi ang hirap, di ba? Nakita nyo yung ano, yung video ng tat, ano, tatlong video na yan na parang pinapakausapatan ng mga pirates na para tubusin sila, di ba? So if you like this vlog, kindly like and subscribe to my Facebook page. YouTube channel and of course TikTok. The name is The Seaman Vlogger. So before I end my vlog, I would like to read a shoutouts. Okay guys, uh, shoutouts from Harrison Podador. Pa shoutout po sir, ingat ka lagi sa trabaho sir. Always po ako nanonood ng vlog mo po sir. So thank you very much for like, subscribing and watching The Seaman Vlogger. Next shoutouts, Uh, from Jovan Piliane Shout out po sir So shout out to you Thank you very much for liking, subscribing and watching the Seaman Brother Next vlogs from Dref TV Sir pa shout out po ako Third year college po ako And pag graduate na this June Marinigiling po ako And ang dami ko pong natututunan dito sa And kinakabahan po ko sa paghahanap ng company Highs So thank you very much Even though uh, engineering ka Nandito ka sa nautical vlog, di ba? Anyway, uh, parehas naman yung mga ibang uh, information natin, ibang info uh, pwede sa nautical or sa engineering. So, thank you very much for liking, subscribing, and watching the Seaman Vlog. Okay guys, so in case gusto nyo ng shoutout, kindly comment below. Tapos pag gagawa ko ng vlog, babasahin po natin yan isa-isa. And guys, by the way, I have second YouTube channel which is the Marino Gamer Republic. So, ano bang ginagawa ni Marino Gamer Republic? It's isang full game uh, channel Uh, usually may hilig ako maglaro ng, ano, ng uh, video games katulad ng Call of Duty yan PlayStation, uh, PC games, dati pa yung PSP yan, lagi kong tala yan So parang ganito ginagawa ko Okay guys, so thank you very much, I've completed my vlog See you on my next vlog.